Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're live from 304 Studios in Jonesboro, Arkansas. This is the STS Pod dot club production i'm bt and there is the heat magnet dustin five star baby how's it going dustin thanks a lot man you're <laughs> as if i need any help getting more heat you got to ask all the questions about all the people that's going to get me the most heat but uh, let me let me get one out real quick oh yeah <laughs> bring it on bt here we go. First of all, tonight, right now, if you're if you're thinking about doing something on a Friday night, go to Cooter, Missouri, baby. Cooter, Cooter Missouri. Cooter. Cooter. American Hostile <laughs> Championship Wrestling. We're gonna got Big Jack Parker's gonna be there. Cookie St. James, the Moonshiners, Denzel Rollins, uh, Mark Souther Jr., the Young Goats, Rude, and the L.A. Hustlers who debut tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Memphis wrestling. Excited, excited. Let me tell you what we're doing. So this is Cool Kids Countdown, and all episodes are Memphis in May. So we went all the way back in the archives. 2006, I started WrestlingRightOnline.com, May the 14th. And then in the month, well, it, leading up to May 14th, 2011, I shut the site down, and I teased. For months, a big announcement, and big no announcement. big big announcement. The big announcement was we was closing down the website, uh, and I counted down the top fifty from five years because we did the site for five years in fifty days. So fifty days building up for the number one position, and then I said, "See you later, bye. We're done." Uh, then later on came and started doing this website, uh, this podcast, and the website. Uh, but what we're going to do is in 2011, I released the top 10, little controversial even then. Uh, but we're going to talk about all the wrestlers, uh, tag teams, managers, whatever the top 10 there. I'm going to give you the names, Dustin. So I'm going to be the top the, 10 of 2011. Yeah, a 50. That's of six 50. years now. Now that's okay. five years of the website, so it's the whole five years combined. There was 50 wrestlers. So so this this list should be star studded with some of the, the best wrestlers that we've seen in Memphis wrestling, like the gun show Brett Michaels and no, no, Mike no, no, Anthony. No, no, no. Not, not right Post now. Not right now. What? Uh, not well, they surely guys. they were the best back then, too. All right. We got to no? wait and see here. Let's take a look. By the <laughs> way, uh, just so you guys know, Dustin's healing tonight, and I'm baby facing. So, no, so no. So here's the thing is. <laughs> Let me get this out there is I do not intend to badmouth or bury anybody. When you ask me a question and I answer that honestly and and somebody doesn't like it, I'm sorry. I'm not like attacking personally on anybody or attacking any characters. We understand. I'm I understand. telling the story, I'm just, brother. I'm just giving you hell, man. Uh, I know, but they do too. They all I give do, me hell too. <laughs> I do know some of these top ten are, well, they're just not some of your favorites. and. And, and in a top three, it was kind of uh, – you probably got something to say about the top three. So well, let's start with number off. 10. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give what the awards they won real quickly and just give uh, a little bit of uh, who they are in case people don't know. But the first one is uh, Hollywood Jimmy. He won side of the year, manager of the year in 2007, 8, and 10. I wrote Jimmy's been all over the map in this area from EPW to Memphis Wrestling, he's the most well-known manager in the last five years. He won Manager of the Year more than anyone and was nominated all five years in the category. All right, let's talk about Hollywood Jimmy Blaylock, number 10. Oh, since the first day that I entered the wrestling business on the independent local scene here in the Mid-South, Hollywood Jimmy Blaylock has been the number one wrestling manager. And there's nobody else that even comes close. And that's not being disrespectful. That's just saying that Jimmy Blaylock across the Mid-South, whether it be on any kind of Memphis wrestling program, EPW program today, or even back then when I started over 20 years ago, Hollywood Jimmy was like the head of every show. He was the top heel manager at every show uh, that he was at then. And he still is to this very day. He's very good on the microphone. He has a, a look that is recognizable. You know instantly that that white suit or that red suit is Jimmy. Right, right. And he is so creative. Working with him, 
you got to be a little bit scared when he sends you a text and you're sitting at the desk. Hey, just work with me here. Oh, no. That's when you get a dead possum or something like that that's coming out uh, in the Wrestle Center. So uh, very, very cool stuff. Jimmy Blaylock is the number one manager all across the Mid-South for the last 20 years, in my opinion. Uh, I The only thing I ever thought that uh, – and you mentioned something. He's always wearing the same suit. I love that about a manager. Yeah, I, it's uh, what I call the – Homer Simpson cartoon. It's always now, you, know, you look. You the can same. overuse Jimmy if you overuse. Yes, that's Jimmy. what I was just gonna say. Yes, he can did. become annoying, and and that's no slight on him. That's anybody. If we see too much of you, it's like, oh my gosh. So we try to use Jimmy. I mean, you and Perfectly. I talk about it off air. Perfectly. We try to use Perfectly. Jimmy. He's out there one time, uh, yep. or we know how to use Jimmy. Let me just put it. You that do way. because I've been at shows where I was asked to go out with seven different people. And finally was pulled to the side and told, hey, the least the least number of people you go out with, the more effective you are. Yeah. And so I started going out with one person. All right, here we go. This is the RRO Top 50. This is number nine. You're very familiar with these guys. Pitcher Perfect, Chris O'Neill, John Michael, Christian Jacobs. They were uh, nominated for Tag Team of the Year, Horizon Star of the Year, MVP, uh, tag team MVP in the awards that they won was tag team of the year in 2006 and a TV match uh, in 2010. And they also, John Michael got for EWE, he got Booker of the year in 2010. I said, this is the team that could have made more tons of money during the territory days. They are also a team that makes me wonder why because they are not working for the WWE. If I booked a show in this area, they would be the top babyface team. Picture well, perfect number nine. In 2011 or 2006, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure. Um, those are two guys that I thought were very, very close to being signed to contracts. I was actually there and witnessed it, and I don't know how it didn't happen, but for some reason it didn't happen. That might have been Burt Prentice's it, fault. And that was John. That was when John and Christian were working together as just yes. a team without Chris, without Chris O'Neill, right? Yeah, right, yeah. right. Which I recently saw Chris O'Neill. Um, I mean, he's not wrestling anymore. I think the other two do a little bit of work, but nothing nothing too much. But um, three, two of the three of those guys, and that's no slight on Chris. It's just that trendsetter John Michael – and Christian Jacobs had a very similar look. He looked, they looked very similar. They looked like brothers. Like, yeah, yeah. They looked like <laughs> brothers. So I don't know how they had the height, they had the size. I don't know how they didn't get signed, but here in the area, man, picture perfect, especially those two as a team, was, uh, I mean, they were the, they were the bomb. The girls loved them. They had good matches. Uh, I've called them the. I've called them many times the Fabs of that that five years. They were, unfortunately been really big, big, big. They were never really, you know, featured on a Memphis wrestling television product. You know, I don't, I'm not sure. It was more of the Dyersburg type of area and all that kind of stuff. But um, those three, you know, I had matches with with all of those guys, but especially Chris O'Neill. We had a heck of a feud out in Ripley, Tennessee, but. Um, yeah, I, I I literally thought that uh, Christian Jacobs and John Michael were going to the WWE. Me too, me point. too. That's well, that was that bloody out. that bloody barbed wire match you had with Chris O'Neill. Yeah, that that. you want to talk was, about that? <laughs> well, let's not talk about that. It was so bloody. It's so bloody. I know it's gory. All right, number eight, Brian Thompson. He was manager at the time. He also got voted. Uh, he won columnist because we did awards announcer, manager, team. Uh, part of the team of Midnight Gold. He was MVP team, Midnight Gold. This is one of those guys that's been involved uh, in the whole picture when it comes to wrestling in the area. Columnus, author, announcer, manager, booker, promoter, and TV. Even with all that experience and knowledge, he might still be one of the most underrated people in the area. He has one of the smartest minds in the business. This is what I wrote. I am proud to call him my friend. But he helped a lot on the website at the time. What's your opinion of Brian Thompson? I don't really have a, a major opinion of Brian Thompson. Um, he didn't really do a whole lot of work in the area that I worked. I mean, he was more of like Missouri and Arkansas, I believe. Um, of course, I'm very familiar with Brian. He's been a friend of mine for years and years. I'm not a particular fan when he joins your role in the Nomenpo podcast because he just because he doesn't watch the show and he doesn't know the characters. And if you if you're critiquing a show based off of storylines and character development and such, but you don't know how those characters developed or how those stories got you there. You have to really watch hard. week in a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. very hard to give a, a review on 
on stuff like that if, if you don't it's like reviewing monday night raw but not watching it you know and and that's all i thought uh, that brian a lot of his value is going to be behind the scenes like you said as far as writing and um i think he does editing audio video and stuff like that but then um also he was a heck of a manager too you know so me and brian thompson we've known each other many many years but i don't remember a whole lot that was particularly in memphis or mainly was in Arkansas and Missouri. Right. Well, you know, we the thing about it is what uh, if you're not familiar and you know this wrestlerideonline.com, we called it uh, uh, the K Fave Sheep, the Wrestling Observer of this area, Arkansas, yeah. Tennessee. What I did was I just said, okay, well, how was Dave Meltzer successful? Well, he just there no K Fave when it came to Dave Meltzer. So I started doing it in this area, and it was surprising. People didn't even know what the word cafe meant or had never heard of it. Uh, but it was, uh, you know, I had so much heat, Dustin. You know, I had heat like crazy. Yeah. People hated me. But when I came to the show, they always kissed my ass. So it's just uh, the way another, it was. Another tidbit about Brian Thompson is uh, before I left to go to WWE Developmental, I cut commercials for a show that he was promoting. I believe it was in Arkansas. And I was never able to make it to that show. Even RCW, that's right. You yeah, were not able to I make that. Yeah, I ended up signing and going to the developmental. So I'll never forget that. That was actually a pretty cool thing for me at the time to be asked to do that commercial. No, no matter how big or small it was, you know, I was I was in. But then it was kind of kind of a cool story that it was him and the commercial, and then I was never able to do the show because I signed. So that was cool. Kind of right. All right, we're up to number seven, uh, top 10 RRO. It's always hard for me to say. Uh, 2011, it was Eric Wayne. Eric had won Arena Match of the Year in 2008, Horizon Award, which was one of those, uh, he's going to be the big, next big star in 2008, 2009, Arena Report Match again, and 2010, also Arena Report Match. Uh, he always was in for four of the five years. He was in the top 10, uh, even with the tag team with Kid Nichols, which you've used recently. Uh, I put here's a guy from the first match to right, right now has been a major influence in this business. He has a potential to be the best in this area for years to come with his drive and determination. He is one of my favorite guys to watch wrestle. I was there for his first match. And I also was there the weekend he came back telling us the uh, Randy Orton story. Yes. Uh, I also was there. Yes, yes. And so let's talk about him. You talk about him, Eric Wayne. And where yeah, is me. Eric? I seen him. I seen he might be at EPW every once in a while. First of all, but what all happened? That, all that stuff that you mentioned about match of the year and all that stuff that kind of makes me feel like that he nominated himself or he had something to do with that because that's not, that's not, uh, there's no way get out of here with that. Yeah. It was all shoot, dude. I mean, everybody well, always uh, voted on the site. So, I mean, you know, he could have paid some horizon enough, horizon but. award. Uh, never really lived up to that. And I'm not hating. He's, he's just not a cool guy. Let me just say that he's just not a cool guy. You don't see him very much anymore. Thank goodness. Um, and one of those guys that, we don't even have to do a teaser on this. This is live and in living color on that one. Yeah, I'm just, I've just i never been a fan of his. I never liked his look. I never liked uh, his attitude. I never liked his promos. Um, he was sick to death every time he had to wrestle me, and I beat him. Um, there was one particular spot. This is just kind of a funny story. I don't even know why I'm going to tell it. But he wanted to do something in the ring, and I'm like, no. And then we kind of, you know, I don't really bicker that much. So I go, all right, well, we'll just go out there and see who wins. <laughs> <laughs> and then before we walked out to the curtain, he wanted to come and, and chat with me. So I remember that. I just think that um, he never, ever lived up anywhere close to what he could have been. And mostly it was just due to his piss poor attitude. So his father was one hell of a worker uh, he was. and went a hell of a tag team. And he just, uh, I, you're right. He's a guy who never lived up to his potential. There's a way to do stuff and there's a way not to do stuff. And that way not to do stuff gets you a lot of heat with the boys. And I think he is a prime example of that. Right. I agree. I agree. So. I agree. All right, number six. Let's let's look. This was in 2011. Number six, 
Oh, you're going to like this guy. This oh my is gosh, one of man. our favorites here. He won Arena Report Match 2007, MVP Performer 2007, Tag Team or Team 2008, and MVP 2008 again. He was RO Top 10 in singles and tag teams, ranked four at his highest. Uh, he was uh, also in tag teams with Derek King as Hot Topic. His oh, name okay. is his name is Stan Lee. Stan, I wrote this in 2011. Stan is one of the best that I've had the privilege of seeing live in all of the 33 years of going to live matches. I have said that about I've said that only about a few people in the top 50, but Stan is the man and deserves to be in the WWE. He can do it all, high flying, wrestling, and putting together. The psychology of a good match. I have been to many shows where the match he he was in made the show. Talk about Stan Lee. And if you've never seen Stan Lee wrestle, I'm so sorry. You you, you missed a great great guy. He's awesome. And a, a great wrestler. First of all, congratulations to Stan and Chelsea. They just right, had yeah, first baby. So congratulations on that. Two of our two of our good friends. Stan Lee is one of the most gifted athletes that I've ever been in the ring with. He can literally do anything. He's so athletic. I think Stan's problem is, is he just didn't have that drive to get to the next level. I don't even know that he wanted to, you know, he did some stuff in Puerto Rico with tag team champions with Derek. They were a great team. I always thought that Stan should be in the WWE because he oh, did yeah. have a, he had a good physique. His skill level was on a whole different planet than most of the guys that are in this area. And he always had really good matches. I mean, split leg moonsault, frog splash off the top. I mean, the dude was unbelievable. And it's really unfortunate that he's, you know, he moved out of town now, but then also just doing other stuff and not doing wrestling. It's kind of unfortunate that we can't get that Stan and put him in the wrestle center. Like, if we can get in a time machine and go back to 2011. Oh, man, yeah, He's yeah. one of the guys I would grab and say, okay, we need to put you right there in the wrestle center. So, Nothing bad to say about Stan. I can't He's say a bad word about the fantastic. kid. I really just uh, – I remember him doing an angle on Memphis television where they uh, they threw him into the cage, and I always uh, joked and told everybody that I taught him how to do that. I taught him how to sell, you know, I, like I did, you know. But the thing about Stan, it's uh, there's only a few, few people can do things like this, but he could watch something or you could talk to him about a move. Just talk to him about it. Here, do this. Hold that guy's leg. Now slam him this way, and boom, he's using it in the next match. I mean, that's how talented he was. And then after he started learning the business, putting together the matches, when yeah. to put the, the moves in, he, he was well, right there. And he had Derek helping a lot. So. You did mention um, John Michael doing Booker of the Year or something, and I don't necessarily remember all that. I remember that Stan and Derek, especially Stan, was like the leader of that wrestling company. That wrestling company had a bank account and a savings account and stuff for the first time ever. And mostly it was due to Stan, from what I remember. Now, yeah, I was not crazy. in the office. I wasn't on the booking team or in the office or anything. But from my perspective, Stan was what kept that company together. The um, I can't even remember what it was called. TLCW or whatever. Yeah, TLCW. In yeah, Ripley. yeah. He was the yeah. one that – and me and Stan had some really good feuds, just like me and Chris O'Neill did. And Stan was always the most fun to work with. I remember one main event match, match. We had a poker table set up in the center of the ring and we played strip poker to where it got him all the way down to his undies. And then we had a big fight. And we also did the five star band one time only. Shout out to Bobby Murray. But I sang Sharp Dressed Man in the ring and Stan came out and, inter you know, like uh, interrupted it and threw all the stuff all over the place. So we did some really fun stuff. Stan's great. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, I miss Stan. We're just, and just a sweet guy, man. He just, Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah. All right, guys. Right at this moment, if you're watching live, keep watching. But if you're not and you're listening to the audio, commercial break right now, and we'll be back with five, four, three, two, and one. All right. We got five, 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 five star. Hey, five. hey. got five more to go. R R R O top 50. Number five, and you mentioned this is a guy that you saw on one of your – I think it was your first match in the dressing room with me. We have Psycho and Pappy, the Asylum. 
They won Moondog uh, Award. Psycho did Brawler. That was the Moondog Award. I can see that. Award. <laughs> he won. They won Gimmick of the Year in 2010. MVP Team 2010. They wrestled. They wrestled over a hundred dates that year, uh, and that's that's a lot compared to working twice the weekend and sometimes three. Uh, and then they won Tag Team of the Year in 2010. When it came to tag teams, they were always listed in the top ten all five years. I wrote this duo has has the distinctive honor of being the top team of the countdown. Psycho was probably probably worked more shows than any performer in the area in the last five years. As a team, they probably have worked more than anyone. Even though they are not cookie cutter wrestlers, they are two of the most popular guys in the area. The longest running gimmick, and both are well known for working hardcore. On more than one occasion, Psycho has saved my ass in the last five years, and he was happy enough to to stand between me and a couple of people that wanted to whip my ass because I said they had a shitty match or something like that. So there you go. I, I mean, you know, I had heat back then. All right, Psycho and Pappy, the <laughs> asylum. Um, if you're looking at, you know, flavors of ice, ice cream and professional wrestling, it's not my flavor of ice cream. But when you mention Moondog Awards and Brawler Awards and uh, the gimmick and all that kind of stuff, man, that was it, brother. They had the gimmick. That Katie, the baby doll, named after your daughter, I think. Yep, my oldest daughter. Yeah, I remember seeing that in the first wrestling locker room I went into, and I was looking at this guy in a jumpsuit like he just <laughs> escaped us an insane asylum. So, I mean, with those guys, it was all not not even it didn't even really matter about the work, the match. I mean, the, the gimmick and how scary and intimidating it was and the baby doll just being just cringe, you know. Um, and I they, don't, they were known to be a little stiff, too. I don't, I don't well, know. I, don't, I was going to say, I don't know if they're the top tag team in the entire top 50. That might you you might be a little bit of a homer on the listing, but that's cool. Be, I, I always like those. Also, there is a very very viral video of Psycho oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. hitting the ropes, and the and his head gets under the top rope, or did the rope break or something? Got, yeah, the rope breaks, and he goes Ooh. head for oh, it's dangerous. Even Tommy we'll Dreamer, to that one, yeah, yeah. Even Tommy Dreamer and those guys are like tweeting that one out, and that was years and years ago. And and Psycho has passed away since then. So yep. yep. God rest his soul. I want to say good things about him and his his family or whatever. But uh, man, that viral video of him hitting, I heard that he never even never got hurt. No, it didn't even he didn't even he just fell, kind of got broke, up and broke. kept going. So oh man, it was it looked nasty. I mean, much nastier than what we saw Bobby Lashley here recently. Like Psycho Oh yeah, like it, it did. It looked really bad. Yeah. And it went like you said, it went viral before stuff was going viral. I mean, everyone I'll tell was you, doing it. If um if that tag team was still going today, I would bet that they would be here at the Wrestle Center. Oh, I do too. Yes, yes. Just hard, hard workers. And uh, like you said, had a unique look. The story of the baby doll was that me and him was in a car coming back from a show. And I said, I know what you need. Cause he had the jumpsuit. I said, cause my daughter had a baby doll that had an arm ripped off and it was laying in her. I remember it laying in her toys. And I said, and it had the name Katie. She had wrote Katie so no one would steal it. That's Ugh. what she told me. Somebody was going to steal that baby doll. And so we're we're driving back from a show, and I go, man, you need that. And then I went home and asked my daughter, can he have that? Does he really want it, she said. I go, yeah, he, wa he wants the baby doll. Okay, he, he really can want? have it. So it was, uh, it was part of his gimmick, and it was there the whole time. So, uh, all right, number five. We both know this guy really well. Um, RRO top 50, number four. I'm sorry, I saw four. him was number five. Number four, he uh, let's look at his wins MVP 2006, Arena Match 2009, Horizon 2009, MVP Performer 2009, another Arena Match. No, as you're saying these, I'm trying to guess who it is in my head. As you're saying, these. well, he works for you and recorded a show with me on Wednesday. He's the best of the best, Austin Lane, number four. Austin Lane is the best of the best. Funny story about me and Austin. We had never met and for some reason didn't like each other. You know, oh, wow. Like, no kidding. That's, yeah, that's kind of like not liking food, but you've never tried it, right? <laughs> so the first time that we, that we really met and interacted was in a match that I was booked in against him. And so we're like, both of us just kind of like, we've heard about each other and about you know, of course, I'm a heel. Was this at NEW? Was this at NEW? 
No, I think in it was West Memphis? before then. I think it was okay. Even before, all right, it's before that. All right. It was before, but me and Austin did have some really good matches yeah, yeah. At, at that company as well, and that was Austin carrying me a hundred percent of the time. Sometimes Austin, and I, what, I mean that for real, like Austin would say, "Do this," and I'm like, "No, nah, I don't really want to do that," uh, because I didn't want to. It's it's not not that I didn't want to do it. He wanted me to give him a certain bump, and I'm like, "Man, I don't want to do that to him." You know, like that's like if somebody says, "Chop me," I don't want you to chop me, brother. So I ain't chopping <laughs> you. you <know? laughs> so like literally, Austin would he carried me through that through that match over there at NEW, and we had some good matches that were never televised or anything like that, and. Um, I remember when we launched Memphis Wrestling, he contacted me, and I had no idea that he was not that he was still working or had any interest in producing or anything like that. And so when he reached out to me, there was it's like, are you kidding me? There's no question about it. Um, but Austin, I mean, he has wrestled some of the very best in the business and oh, has yeah. held his own with them here at the Wrestle Center. I have not seen him have a bad match or a bad promo. And I don't care what anybody says about Austin Lane; he is the best of the best. Man, he's gonna I be just, here. Uh, Actually, he'll be here later doing a seminar. That's how good he is, is he's coming in to train uh, not only our, our trainees that are here at the Wrestle Center, but he's coming to train with some of the guys and gals, too. So we've opened it up to everybody in Memphis Wrestling to come in here, and Austin's going to work on promos, just work on some of the awesome, awesome, awesome. some of the tiny details. I just was going to say, we started – I, I got to promote my show, but it's another Patreon show, very similar to the one – uh, you and I do where it comes out then they have to wait a month to get it on uh, the main feed, but it's a psychology one-on-one and you know me, yep. I'm all about psychology. I say, oh, I know everything there is to know. Uh, we start doing this match and I just shut up. I just like, okay, I'm going to let Austin talk. And he was picking the tiniest little things and saying, what's this? Look, they're building for this and they're going. And I'm like, Okay. All right. I see it, but I didn't see it the first there, time. But he sees stuff that other people don't see. And there's certain certain people that really get it when it comes to women's wrestling. Women's and wrestling is, is yes, you're right. You're the right. most popular wrestling right now is women's wrestling. The women's division, hands down. I don't care what company it is. The women's division is the most popular. And Austin not only works very well with the women inside the ring, but outside of the ring too. So a lot of the stuff that you see in the ring or outside of the ring here at Memphis Wrestling, a lot of time is is really produced or has Austin's fingerprints all over it. I know you told me that uh, when we were in Newport, you said uh, me and you were standing there and you said, I do this, he does that. And, and he's, and the thing about Austin is that there's a lot of this, um, and you talked about it before being able to take people and do storylines with them, but he is so proud of what he does for somebody else. Yeah. He is so he's not selfish at all. If he can put somebody over or get them over or get them over with something an idea he came up with, he will do it. And that's one of the good things about Austin. All I right. Have to, I have Go to reel ahead. him in. I have to say Austin, <laughs> you're strong, brother. You're strong today. And he's like, "Okay." And I'm like, "No, no, no. Strong." I have to tell him cuz he's very very giving. So sometimes it's like, "No, man, this match is for you, brother. Take it." Right, right, right. But yeah, yeah, because uh, there's multiple people he's feuded with, and he would tell me, when I get done, this guy's going to be over. Yeah. And, I mean, that's his. That's what he wants to do. All right, this number three guy, uh, it looks like he's missing one year. He looks like he left the area in 2010, but uh, he was side of the year in 2006. He won Horizon 2007, 2006. TV match 2009, wrestler of the year 2009. He has done more than most guys in the area in the last five years. A WWE contract, worked on major TV shows, worked for TNA and all the local promotions in the area. He has tons of discipline and guys that want to work for a living in this business should consider him a role model. He is Dustin five star. Now that's some, that's some damn good shit there. That was really good shit right there. I ain't five. <laughs> hey, could you just go ahead and read it one more time? Cause I got some of the I, students I, here walking we go. in the room. <laughs> I want them, I want them to hear that. Yeah. That's definitely a big. And compliment. you had all kinds of nominations. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 right. nominations in the five years, but you were not there for the last year, which hurts, hurts you being, you didn't get number two for that reason. Cause you weren't in the area. So. 
Well, so I am really anxious. Talk to see about who, yourself. Talk about. I'm yourself. really anxious to see who's number one and number two, and who can who can top that description that you just gave there, man. I've been wrestling in this area a really long time, and there came a point in my career to where it was like, I'll be honest, there was there was a little bit of I don't a little bit of partying as far as like doing stuff that you probably shouldn't do. I'm going to say it just because I don't want people to think that I'm snorting Coke or anything like that. Like we might have a beer before the match or something like that, you know, sure, kind of sure. a hangout type of thing. We weren't getting drunk and all that kind of stuff. That was after the show, but there, but there were some things that I was thinking, okay, so look self, if you're going to make it in this business, then you need to do things differently. You need to get serious. If you don't, that's cool. Just go have fun, be a local celebrity or whatever. And so that's when I got really serious and I stopped, stopped doing a lot of the, like you said, the discipline, man, I started getting in tip top shape. Um, one of the things that I heard from one of my WWE tryouts was, man, you're pretty good in the ring and all that kind of stuff. You look okay. I mean, you know, blah, 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 blah. So you always have to take something. So when they say I look okay, I can't really do that much about my in-ring work. At that point, I've been wrestling so long, you know, I can learn a little bit, but I could always look better. And so at that point, I really went into major focus mode. And you were, too, with the Diet Man stuff. Right, right. That's but, that's actually the reason I quit the website, that I had so much stuff going on with that. And there was no TV at right. all. Uh, and so it right. was hard for me to do a website with no TV. Right. And so uh, at that point, I just got mega serious. And I had uh, tryouts lined up. You said I worked worked for TNA I immediately when I left the WWE developmental I mean, there's a whole story leading up to it. And I think I've told it on. We the have. We told podcast. it on one of the shows. I'll put it in the link if you're looking at it. But it was on oh, iTunes. It'll be. It was there. just about being focused, and some of the same stuff that I tell the trainees here is: you have to be focused. You have to work on this even when you're at home. You're working on it even when everybody in your household is going to sleep. I was reading to myself out loud to make to be more articulate or to be able to speak better or whatever. So I didn't sound. You know, and there's nothing wrong with a Southern accent, but when I hear that WWE does not like to hire people with a Southern accent, I'm like, okay, well, let's get rid of that Southern accent. Right, right, when right. When I hear yeah. that WWE doesn't use the word belt or hospital, they use local medical facility <laughs> and title, I'm using those. I am preparing myself to get to that next level 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And that, that includes eating, sleeping, working out, eat. Uh, supplements whatever it is reading out loud whatever it is that's what i was what i was going for and uh, uh yeah i can't really i mean i can talk a lot about myself but you talk a lot I mean, we've talked at about that it. point it's... in time though i had one focus and that was to to make it to work WWE. for the wwe and you did and there's something and i remember criticism even back then that because yeah. oh he's a referee he's not a wrestler i'm like he's working for the wwe yeah. it did not matter you were in the door so so, but I mean, that, that was one of those things where, um, you know, they liked my look. I'm shorter, wasn't 250 pounds. I was more 180 shredded too, man. When I showed up, they even told me, Hey, you know, we have a wellness policy, meaning that they drug test. I said, Bring it on baby. And so when they, they, I was willing to do whatever role that they told me. And I know I've told this story, but real quick, I told Steve Kern, I'd do anything. So my first day at developmental, he handed me a broom to sweep the floor. So there you go. When you hey. think you made it, sometimes there's a little bit more work to do. Oh yeah, yeah. You, you, you. That's the thing about it is your. You can always put the ring up, Dustin. You know yep. that. <laughs> yep. If it needs to be done, you can do it. So all it. right, number two. Uh, he had a lot of nominations in the five years. He won Booker with TLCW. He was part of their committee in six, uh, 2006 and seven. Uh, columnist in 2009. Uh, MVP team, which would have been him and Bobby Eaton. By the way, I don't know if you know this because I never, ever get credit for this. No one ever says BT did this. But the Midnight Gold team and the name and who was in the Midnight Gold with Bobby Eaton was my idea. So I never get oh. credit for it. I just want you to know. Well, that that's probably a good thing. because. Oh, well, <laughs> Columnist, TV match, MVP, and actually got wrestler in 2010. Dustin Starr wasn't here. Uh, this is uh, obviously this guy is good at it all. Great worker, uh, really good on the mic. He was always real good on the mic. A great wrestling mind. This guy's been should have been a would have been a superstar in the territories. 
Uh, not only is he good at everything that makes a hard worker, he is an all-around nice guy. That was in 2011. Uh, it makes me happy that he is also one of my friends. All right. Talk about Greg Anthony, the golden boy. All right, so Greg promotes in uh, Dysburg, Tennessee, and I'm not a fan of of his posters and the way he promotes and just not – but he has had a promotion there since how long? Four or five years? He still every weekend promotes, and every weekend you see the posters. Uh, I guess Greg has not done anything personally – well, a couple things I'm not happy with, but here's a guy who here's a guy who will never amount to anything in this business. He's a guy that is lazy. He has a terrible look. He always has. He's never spent a single day in the gym. You can say all the great things that you want to say about him. He's not he's I'm not a fan. He's a terrible person. He's a terrible business person. He's a baby. He cries every time somebody does a show around him. He ran a free show against our show, and we still drew 450 people. You, it's not, you can't call it drawing if you're giving it away free, plus you're paying the people to come. You literally gave away $100 at the door, and then you gave away free tickets. You did not draw anything. You gave it away. I just think it's very unprofessional. And you guys might think of what I'm saying is unprofessional, but it is extremely unprofessional a lot of the stuff that they do. So, yeah, you go ahead and talk about him. I'm done talking about him. All right. All right. I, I will stop it right there. Greg Anthony Golden Boy was number It'll two. It'll make his day for his name to even come out of my mouth, I'm sure. Uh, and he uh, – I remember you saying, how the hell is he two and I'm three? That was back in the day. How is he in the uh, top ten at all? I mean, here's a guy he, who runs a show at the same but this time is the same day and draws seven what? people. So that's for shoot seven people, seven people for a shoot. Well, I wrestled in front of 11 one night. So, well, I've wrestled in front of nobody, but my, <laughs> my Memphis wrestling doesn't draw seven people. All right, there we go. That was number two and number one. And you know who this is. Let me just go through it real quick. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's very hard to run a show, first of all. It's extremely difficult to run a show over and over and over and over again for four or five years. It's even harder to run a show on two nights back-to-back, -back, one in one city and one in another city. It's extremely hard to do that. So I can tip my hat to the hard work of him doing that, although I'm not a fan of him or his product or really anything that he's ever touched. But I will, I will say shout-out for hard work on that. Okay, so number I one. I did. I said that's what I was saying too. I, I mean, you you think of somebody that's been doing it for as long, and he has a. I mean, I understand his philosophy the way he does it. I just don't agree with it. So, well, all right, here we go. Understand. Here's the wins. Here's yeah. the wins. Rest of the year, two thousand six. TV match, two thousand seven. Arena report match, two thousand seven. Wrestler, two thousand seven. Team, two thousand eight. Wrestler, two thousand eight. TV match, two thousand ten. He was ranked number one in two thousand six. 2007, number one, 2008, number two, and I believe you were number one that year, number uh, 2009, number three, and 2010, number four, uh, won tag team of the year in 2006, eight, and 10 with his partner, Stan Lee. He's Derek the King. What can be said about a guy who won wrestler of the year for three years in a row? He is indie wrestling in this area. He has always always helped more guys in this area than most would ever imagine. He's helped more guys in this area than you'd ever imagine. 100%. He also he also helped the site with the popularity in, under, in the early years by just having him represent it as wrestler of the year. Derek King, you deserve this, my friend. I wish you had a WWE contract so that you could actually make money in this business. Derrick King, uh, just rest of the year, I got so much heat because he would win every year, and they would think that I was I was doing it. I did not do it. It's like, oh, you're you're Derek's buddy. You're Derek, and then Derek made it worse because every time I was backstage, if he was on the show, he was right with me during the whole time, just met, uh, us having a good time. But most people thinking, oh, you know. BT just likes Derek. He's going to give him a four-star match no matter what. We've talked about Derek on this show, on other shows. Uh, 
uh, with you on it. Like, go ahead, just just talk about Derek. Why was he number one, and and why he's still a top guy uh, eleven years yes. later? Yeah, I mean, 11. absolutely. He's he's a trainer here at the Wrestle Center, so he's able to teach the up and coming talent. He was the top guy for many many years, and and some people think that he still is the top guy, and, and he is. He's still on top here. So I mean. For as long as I can remember, since day one of getting into the business, Derek has helped me. He took me to OVW. Um, he took me to Memphis Television. Uh, I remember driving him and Alan Steele and Blade Boudreaux and Bulldog Reigns and stuff out to Corinth, Mississippi, just to get beat up so we can learn in the ring. One of the first ribs that we ever pulled in the ring, me and Simon, was smashing a hot dog into Derek's face, into his, oh. into his blonde hair, pink hot dog into his blonde hair at Corinth. And he got up and he beat our ass for it. <laughs> <laughs> but he he literally has almost to a fault actually to a fault he has helped so many people to a fault that sometimes he forgets about himself like one of his one of his things was he wanted to bring his friends with him to wwe and because of that he never really got there now jerry lawler did screw him out of a, a developmental contract many years ago and i don't care what anybody says that that sucked Derek should have been there uh, Derek was just a top guy. So you had uh, Jerry Lawler and, and it was Derek King. I don't care what anybody says. Derek was the guy. And as far as wrestling right now, Derek pretty much still is the guy. He's a trainer here. He has influence here at Memphis Wrestling. He's on TV every single week. He's always featured in some sort of storyline. If I need anything from the guys, Derek is one of those guys that I can call. If I need an appearance, at Memphis in May on Friday to go do a barbecue thing. Hey, DK, can you do it? Absolutely. Boom. He's there. He He's not one of those guys that's like, hey, what is, what's in it for me? He knows that that's going to come. You know, we've just worked, we've been friends and we've worked together so long. He knows what this is all about. I always said and, that he was happier, like being the, the big fish in the small pond. It's, you know, the uh, expression there than he would have been if he'd went to WWE. He ended up working in developmental, but wasn't contracted when he was with Brock. He holds a victory. Oh, over yeah. Brock Lesnar. I don't so know how many he, people know this, but when, when uh, Lawler, and I'll tell you how it happened. I don't know if Derek would appreciate it, but this is an old story. It doesn't even matter. But they were going to offer Derek a contract. And since Derek worked for Jerry Lawler, they asked Lawler. And Lawler said, well, why would you pay him? He works for me for free. I remember that story. So that story killed now. Derek's contract. So Cornette, Jim Cornette at OVW told Derek that. But then they still finagled a way to pay Derek. So Jim Cornette and WWE or OVW or whatever, they ended up paying him to be a trainer, him and Jason Lee. So that way they could be under contract and still do some of that stuff and be on television. But he never officially got his contract, and it was all because of his childhood hero literally blocking him out of it. What a great oh, guy. Huh? Oh, what a great guy there. Oh, that's, a, that's a horrible story. Absolutely. It is. Horrible it's a horrible story. story. Uh, Derek uh, was always, uh, even when he first got started, just this skinny little guy that you said what is he doing but he was bouncing all over the place and he was and it seemed like with if you would take six months and then see him six months later it was almost like i'm talking about when he first got started Boom, it was right? uh, yeah it was a different guy it was a so whole good. and he seems six months later and he's a different guy and he understands uh we talked about psychology with austin lane here's a guy My who favorite put, opponent put together so much stuff and you probably hate it sometimes when he wants you to do seven things at the end for a finisher but he could always do it and have the crowd up here when he needed them and down here when he didn't and that's what i mean that's why he was wrestling years so many times uh big shout out to Derek king Derek, we appreciate everything you've done in this area he was number one uh, the rro top 10 50 i can't even say it but that was a top 10 that was our cool kids countdown hey just stay stay on for just a minute oh, Dustin. this is where i for really a get patreon for a patreon i got something to tell you same bad time guys same bad channel on the best little wrestling podcast and kill me for this the business. <laughs> be there tonight right now two hours from now, if you're watching this cooter Cooter, Cooter, Missouri. Be there, guys. For Shout American out to Money Mark. Money Mark's going to be there. Money Mark. <laughs> There's nothing worse than a Money Mark. <laughs> <laughs> and Dustin, you know, I love my mama. Oh, yeah.
All right, going off the main feed, I got a story to tell you. I'm going to be in big trouble for that. Uh... <laughs> no, no, no. I didn't know what to say. I just, I want him to ask me why I said 